Do you sense that Jehovah is drawing closer to you? In what way does he do so? Let us pay close attention as Brother Norman Lum, a full-time representative of Jehovah for over 32 years, presents the keynote address, How Jehovah Draws Close to Us. What does it mean to be close to Jehovah? Well, we might help you by asking another question. What does it mean to be close to another human? Usually, don't we say that two people are close to one another when they like one another a lot, when they know each other very well? Isn't that when we generally say they're close to one another? So based on that definition, I think we can all see that we can actually draw close to Jehovah. In James chapter 4 and verse 8, Jehovah made a simple statement through James. He said, draw close to me or to Jehovah and I will draw close to you. Now, we can have a close relationship with Jehovah because, number one, he extends that invitation to us. And secondly, he promises that if we accept that, he will actually draw close to us. What an encouraging thought that is. But remember, friendship is two-way. It's when people like each other. Do you think when we go on our ministry, or perhaps even in the Christian congregation, that many people would like to feel close to God, and yet they don't sense or feel that? Have you ever felt that way? Why is that? Why do people feel like that? Well, perhaps, one, they may feel that God doesn't want them as a friend. Or perhaps they may feel that the Creator, the, the Almighty One of the universe, well, it's unthinkable that they should actually be a friend of His, that He's way too remote in order to contemplate you as a desirable person. Or perhaps people may feel unworthy, maybe unworthy to try and approach him and initiate a friendship. But all of that, all of that kind of thinking runs contrary to the scriptures. Please turn to Acts chapter 17 and verse 27. Acts chapter 17, verse 27. There it says that people should seek God if they might grope for him and really find him although, in fact, he is not far off from each one of us. That's an interesting scripture. The scripture is not telling us that God is omnipresent, as if somehow he's all around us and it's easy to reach out and find him. I mean, our Milky Way galaxy, at the speed of light, would take 100,000 years to cross. In so far, in the observable Milky Galaxy, no one has seen a brilliance of Jehovah there. So this verse is not talking about God being literally close to us. But this verse is saying that we can actually grope for God, seek Him, and we will find Him. Because He isn't far off from us. What that verse does mean is that he is willing to receive humans into his favor as close friends. And that rules out 
all that other kind of thinking that I'm not unworthy or I'm not worthy to be God's friend. He's too high for us. That verse rules that out. In Psalm 65, the psalmist said, Happy is the one you choose to cause to approach, that they may reside in your courtyard. Like, how close is that? That we can reside in God's courtyard. King Asa of Judah was one who searched for Jehovah. Uh, that was about 963 before our common era. Let's look at his example in Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 2. A faithful king who searched for Jehovah, and furthermore, Jehovah allowed himself to be found by him. Second Chronicles 15, verse 2. You notice in verse 1, it's Azariah the prophet speaking here. So when verse 2 starts, it says, Consequently, he, that is Azariah, went out before Asa and said to him, Hear me, O Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. Jehovah is with you as long as you prove to be with him. And if you search for him, he will let himself be found by you. So Asa did that. But how did he do that? Do you notice in verse 2 of chapter 14, it said, Asa proceeded to do what was good and right in the eyes of Jehovah. In other words, he was one who was continually searching for Jehovah. In verse 4, it further confirms that when he said he did the law and the commandments. In other words, when he looked for him, he was willing to apply those laws in his life. If, like Asa, we want to be a friend of Jehovah, it is vital for us to draw close to him. And then, like Asa, we can be assured of Jehovah's blessing now and eventually become part of his universal family. So, this morning... And for the next two days, well, three days, brothers and sisters, we're going to learn primarily of two ways that Jehovah draws close to us. The first one is we need to recognize that in any relationship, someone has to take the initiative, and that's the first point. Jehovah has taken the initiative to draw us to him. That's an interesting statement. Jehovah has taken the initiative to draw us to him. Please turn to 1 John chapter 4, and we will see how Jehovah has done that. And we can contemplate that for the next three days here. 1 John chapter 4, starting at verse 9. First John chapter 4, verse 9. By this, the love of God was made manifest in our case, because God huh, sent forth his only begotten Son into the world. You knew that. That we might gain life through him. The love, John says, just so that we get the point, is in this respect. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent forth his son as a propitiatory or an appeasing sacrifice for our sins. And just to make sure we get the point again, in verse 19, he says, As for us, we love because he first loved us. Jehovah was the first in showing love for humans, and that seems rather odd because in Acts 17 we just read that if we search for God... He's really not far off from us that we will find him. Like that verse seems to indicate, does it not, that we're the ones that take the initiative to look for God. But that's not what we just read in 1 John 4. We just read that God was the one that first loved us. Think of it for a moment. Who created our beautiful earthly home? Any humans around to see that? When Jehovah made all of the beautiful provisions for mankind on earth today, any human around to counsel him what we need? 
Who arranged to look after our spiritual needs before we were even thought of? And perhaps before we even realized that we could pray to Jehovah God and be heard from Him, who was the one that assured us that He was willing to listen to us? There is no doubt about it, brothers and sisters. We love God because He first took the initiative to love us. And through these three days, you will appreciate that even more. But what is the foremost way that Jehovah draws us to him? What do you think? Did you answer yet? What's the foremost way that Jehovah draws us to him? And you might say, well, we just read that. 1 John 4, we just read that in verse 9 and 10, that God loved the world so much that he sent his son. And that's the primary way, brothers and sisters. That is the primary way or the key to intimacy with God. That we accept the provision of the ransom sacrifice and appreciate it. Because once that provision was made, it became the unique approved approach to Jehovah. Remember John 14, 6? I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus said of himself. And by means of Jesus, Jehovah said in John 6, 44, that by means of his spirit, he would draw him. No one comes to the Father except by him drawing him through Christ Jesus. Imagine Imagine that for a moment, brothers and sisters. Jesus and Jehovah involved in your personal life. The two most desirable people in the universe want you personally to be intimate friends with them. Can you imagine that? Wasn't that a great illustration in our April special magazine about Christ? Remember the illustration about a gift and a gift isn't a gift unless you accept it? And per- remember that? If you extend a gift and, and if, the per- if you don't take it from that person's hand, it's not actually a gift to you. The ransom was God's gift to you pers- Have you accepted that yet? Do we appreciate that? But we're not the only ones to actually have benefited from that gift. Long before Jesus came on the earth, Jehovah actually made provision for pre-Christian humans to benefit from that. Jehovah was gracious in allowing people to actually benefit from his future provision. He knew that once that was set, it was bound to take place. Please look at Paul's words in Romans chapter 3, verse 25 and 26. Romans chapter 3, verse 25 and 26. Here it says, God set him forth as an offering for propitiation through faith in his blood. This was in order to exhibit his own righteousness or his justice. Because he was forgiving the sins that occurred in the past. While God was exercising forbearance or patience. So as to exhibit his own righteousness in this present season. That he might be righteous even when declaring people prior to Jesus. The man that exercised faith in Jesus as being righteous. What a tremendous privilege for us. And. We need to remember whether people of Jesus' time or people prior to Christ, that by means of this provision, Jehovah is drawing us to him through his spirit. So we might say that Jehovah took the initiative to draw us to him through the ransom of Christ, but by necessity that had to include his Holy Spirit that also worked in that equation. The second way through our convention that we will see that Jehovah draws us close to him is through his written word, the Bible. 
Remember, I mentioned earlier that friendship is two-way. In any relationship, the bond that we forge is based on knowing the person, admiring and valuing his distinctive qualities. Let's take a look at some of Jehovah's admirable qualities in Exodus 34 and verse 6. And you'll have to think about this yourself as to how Jehovah reflects these qualities to you in your life. Exodus 34 and verse 6. Moses, getting a gleam of Jehovah's glory, Jehovah passing by him said, And Jehovah went passing by before his face, declaring, Jehovah, Jehovah, a God merciful, gracious, slow to anger, and abundant in loving kindness and truth. What admirable qualities. Jehovah's appealing qualities and ways are revealed through the Bible. And as a consequence, brothers and sisters, because they are in the Bible, it is a vital field of study for us. The more we learn about Jehovah through the pages of the Bible, the more real he becomes to us and the closer we feel to him. Do you feel close to Jehovah? Do you meditate on what you read so as to perceive qualities of Jehovah and how they build your respect and love for him? Do we ponder the way Jehovah manifests each of his qualities? how Jesus perfectly manifested these qualities in his life so that we could know the Father? Do we see through the pages of the Bible that Jehovah is the rightful and ideal sovereign? That he's the Father we need, strong, just, wise, loving, never abandoning his faithful children. Jehovah had the Bible written for you. Actually, when you think of it, brothers and sisters, when you pick this book up in your hand, it's your personal invitation to a relationship with God. It is written for you. Because all the people who wrote this book are dead already. And the only people who benefit from this page is the one who picks it up and looks at it. And that's you. Isn't it? When you pick that up and read it, and amazingly, Jehovah reveals himself to you. Per- I want you to look at something very interesting in 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 12. Jehovah was so interested in you and me that he had the Bible written in a way that we could relate to it. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 12. About God's word, it was revealed to them, not to themselves, but to you. They were ministering the things that have now been announced to you through those who have declared the good news to you with Holy Spirit sent forth from heaven. Into these very things, angels are desiring to peer. Now, all of these words that were written to you and these announcements the angels took very keen interest in. That's what the verse says. I mean, even though the Bible was directed towards us, it says into these very things angels are desiring to... Do you know how easy it would have been for Jehovah to have angels write this book instead of humans? The only difference would be that we couldn't quite relate to these things because they're angels and not humans. They would have been able to write them but we wouldn't have been able to perceive them from a human standpoint we wouldn't have been able to relate to needs and weaknesses or aspirations because angels just don't feel the same way as humans but we can relate to the writer's feelings can we not we can relate to their doubts their imperfections easily for example you know Jonah when he ran away from the assignment that Jehovah gave him with the Ninevites. Could you ever imagine an angel running away from an assignment from Jehovah God? Could you admit? And then repenting in the belly of a fish? I mean, could you ever see that? 
Or Isaiah, when he said he was unclean in lips, I mean, as a human, we could relate to that. I mean, we've all said perhaps something that we regret saying, or because we haven't put on the fruitage of the Spirit, maybe to the fullest extent yet, we don't quite say things properly, but would a holy angel ever utter an inappropriate word, do you think? In the presence of Jehovah, could you ever imagine an angel being stated as unclean in lips? Do you think angels could say that they feel unworthy? Jacob did. When Jehovah promised to bless him returning to the promised land or the land promised to him, and he was about to meet Esau after many years being uh, uh, apart because of their differences between themselves and he was afraid he prayed to Jehovah that he was unworthy to actually receive this blessing could you ever imagine an angel stating that he felt unworthy are angels fearful do you think have you ever did you ever contemplate the picture in the Daniel prophecy book or the or the Watchtower magazine about this big angel standing behind Daniel in the uh, lion's den with do you see the biceps on this angel have you seen? I mean, they're monstrous. Is is an angel fearful? But Jesus' disciples were when they saw him walking on the water. I mean, we can relate to that. Boldness. The Apostle Paul, after being beaten up, had to muster up boldness in order to preach. Do you think any angel has any difficulty proclaiming the judgment messages of Jehovah? Do you think? So, as faithful as angels are, they just can't quite relate to our feelings. But when a human says it, we immediately understand and feel what was written. And that's a second way that Jehovah draws us to us. Marvelously, brothers and sisters, He's had humans like you and me write this book so that we can relate to it. By pondering what the Bible says about Jehovah's interactions with humans, faithful servants of the past, we learn countless and wonderful things about our God. This is what helps us to know Him very well. This is what helps us to love Him. Now, We have talked about Jehovah drawing us first, taking the initiative to start this friendship. And we have talked about this by relationship of his providing his word, the Bible. So what do we want to do with this talk this morning? And for the next three days, what do we want you to actually learn from these two points? That Jehovah takes the initiative to draw us as friends and he provides his word, the Bible. Well, obviously, we want you to think about that. And every time the Bible is mentioned, we want you to look it up, think about it, and then forge a close bond with Jehovah that will never be broken. And that's what we would like you to do. Please turn to Psalm 73, verse 28. And we had this verse read in our opening talk. And perhaps we will have it read many more times, this convention. Psalm 73, verse 28. Psalm 73, verse 28. Said, but as, for the, but as for me, the drawing near to God is good for me. Is that how you feel? We can become Jehovah's friends now. And what a marvelous thought that is. Imagine being friends of God. So in our crowd here this morning, we may have people here for the first time or people out of curiosity who wandered into this building. And if we're staying for the program here this weekend, then we would encourage you as a newly interested person to listen for something in this convention that actually makes you think, I'm interested in that. I'd like to learn a bit more about that. I'd actually like to draw close to God. If you're a person who is struggling spiritually or maybe raised in the truth and haven't really quite made the truth your own yet, then we urge you 
to think that one, Jehovah has taken the initiative to be interested in you because he's aware of your presence and this book will be referred to countless times over the next two days. There is something in this convention that will help you draw closer to Jehovah if you allow it to. If you are a person who is feeling strong in your relationship with Jehovah at present and love him deeply, then we encourage you to listen to this program so as to deepen your love for Jehovah. And eventually, brothers and sisters, in all three of these categories, eventually in the new world of his making, we can be adopted as his perfected, loyal children. Draw close to God, and he will draw close to you. That simple exhortation is more than a goal. It is a journey. And as long as we remain faithful, that journey will never end. We will never stop drawing closer and closer to Jehovah. There will always be more to learn about him. Do you remember when Jesus was on earth for three and a half years and finally when the Apostle John summed up Jesus' life, he said that everything that Jesus did, well, if it was written, the scrolls couldn't contain on earth what Jesus did. If that was said about the Son, how much more so about the Father? Think of it. After living thousands, millions, even billions of years, we will know far more about Jehovah than we do now. But we will still feel there are countless wonderful things to be learned, and we will be eager to learn them. Brothers and sisters, eternal life will be unimaginably rich, varied. But do you know what? The drawing close to Jehovah will always be the re most rewarding part of it. Isn't that something to contemplate? That's our feelings. That's our desire. So may we let this convention move us to be all the more obedient to our Heavenly Father. May this convention continue to shape us to be the kind of people that Jehovah wants us to be. May Jehovah do so not just now, but throughout all eternity. May he draw ever closer to you personally, and as you contemplate that for the next three days, you might say to yourself, what a marvelous thought that is.